Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Wolf. I serve as a principal solutions architect for Xilab North America here in our Washington, D.C. Uh, headquarters. And uh, it's my pleasure to talk to you today about machine learning, the new search. Uh, we're going to uh, spend about half an hour today discussing uh, the differences in traditional search versus uh, artificial intelligence and assisted review search based, uh, based acquiring of documents. Um, just a little bit about my background. I've spent uh, just under about three years now with Xilab in the e-discovery space. However, my background over the last uh, 15 years is all in content management and search. So I have a bit of a frame of reference here. Um, just a little housekeeping here in GoToWebinar. You are muted, of course, but you are able to ask questions through the GoToWebinar app. So I encourage you, if you do have uh, any questions to ask, just go ahead and uh, use the questions app. Uh, or type into the chat box, either one. And uh, towards the end, uh, if there's time permitting, I will be happy to answer any questions that uh, have come up. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with the content. So really, uh, we feel that the era of traditional search is, is coming to a close as we know it. Um, Ultimately, what it comes down to is there are, no, no matter how well you form a query today, uh, you're ultimately going to get too many hits back. And uh, that also stems from the fact that uh, time and resource-wise, it's not really possible to review all of the search hits that you get in any particular query. Um, also, most people don't really start their searching with knowing exactly what it is they're looking for. Uh, this especially comes up in investigations, we've noticed. Um, they don't know which keywords to use or how to properly spell them. And as a result, the quality of search results from a traditional search is often much lower than the searcher really thinks that they are. Um, research in text mining and machine learning shows that when a user thinks he or she finds more than 80% of all relevant documents in a data set, in reality, it's really no more than about between the 20 to 40% range. So it's actually quite a bit lower than what they think they're getting back. Um, you can see the uh, third bullet, only a small selection of highly skilled searchers. Really, we talk about advanced people who are advanced uh, in their query knowledge, advanced in, in how, they, uh, how they construct queries, are able to get to that, to that 80%. Um, but even as, if these professionals uh, did get to 80%, there's still the, uh, the element of not knowing what it is exactly that you missed, what's in that 20% that you didn't get to. And that's if you're a professional researcher. Uh, so what we're really talking about today are advances in the field of AI and how that can help us move beyond the, the means of traditional search, what we know today as search. Uh, techniques such as text mining, clustering, topic modeling, uh, take a more intelligent approach to help us find what we're looking for, even if it, we don't exactly know how to start um, or what it is, in fact, we're really looking for. Uh, so how does search really impact e-discovery? And that's, that's really what we focus on at Xilab. Um, you know, I like the first bullet, the more unknown unknowns, effectively the, the relevant documents that you don't know that, you, uh, that, that are out there, uh, the higher the risk that you're going to miss critical information. So for this reason, reviewers often create um, Boolean search queries and or not statements to pick up a wide range of potentially relevant documents for e-discovery. They string uh, large queries together with a bunch of and statements or, or statements. Uh, but unfortunately, this is going to result in picking up a lot of noise documents back as well. And reviewing all those non-relevant documents will lead to an unnecessary high review cost, extra time, and you know, need for a large review team to perform that work. So it's really important that you call the documents down, uh, the data set down as much as possible to what's really, what's really relevant. Um, as I mentioned earlier, investigators also have this problem, uh, we've noticed, with, with Boolean queries. They can, they can wind up with way too many results. Uh, more often, I'd say it's probably famine than feast. Uh, the data set is just too large. But it ultimately never really, really leads to the right result set. Um, we, uh, we, have a, we have a number of articles that, that have been written about this on uh, the Xilab.com blog site. So I encourage you uh, some post-webinar reading if you want to check that out. Um, there's some very useful information up there. Uh, so we see that machine learning and, and 
the advances that are make, being made, not just by Xilab, but, but, but all of the technology partners in the industry in terms of artificial intelligence, is really going to become the new form of search in the future. And because ultimately it helps us find the relevant documents that we need much, much more quickly than traditional search. Um, it doesn't really rely on anybody building complex queries, so you don't have to understand a complex query language of, of whatever uh, application you're, you're working with. You are going to miss fewer documents. Uh, in fact, hopefully you'll miss no, no relevant documents. And it'll also filter out a lot of that noise. Uh, a lot of those documents that might seem like hits because they hit, uh, because they, they matched one of your search queries, but are not really what you're looking for. Uh, most importantly though, it allows you to measure that recall of relevant documents. You can't really do that with, uh, with traditional search at all. So, you know, we talk about these terms precision and recall. What, what, what are precision and recall? Uh, they're very important in, in machine learning, and we'll talk a little bit more about them um, towards the end of the webinar, but this is the Wikipedia definition. It's actually pretty accurate, and there's a whole, uh, obviously there's a whole long article that follows this, but I wanted to give this, this snippet here. Uh, what they're basically saying in pattern recognition, uh, precision is the fraction of relevant instances among the retrieved instance. So as we, as we start talking about uh, machine learning as it relates to assisted review, we'll talk about training batches. And so amongst the training batches that you're using to train our classifier, precision is the, the fraction of those relevant instances, it's a percentage. Whereas recall is the fraction of relevant instances that have been retrieved over the whole uh, amount of relevant instances. So that's against, recall is really against the entire data set, whereas precision is against the training batch that you're currently looking at, if that makes, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so just, um, we have a, you know, uh, just to put it out there, uh, as far as traditional search is concerned, we have a very extensive query language within the Xilab eDiscovery uh, application, Xilab 1. Uh, we support uh, Boolean statements and or not. We support um, uh, proximity searching, you know, within proceeds, uh, you can do fielded data searches, so within a specific field name, uh, number range searching, quorum searching, which you'll see an example of in a little bit, uh, the ability to search date and time fields, use wildcards, and of course you even use fuzzy or near similar search. So that's uh, you know finding variations in the word based on misspellings. Uh, we also actually support pattern matching through regular expressions. So very vast query language available in our e-discovery solution, but yet it still doesn't match what can be accomplished through a good assisted review project. And we're going to walk through that in a very quick fashion during this power demo. So our experiment today, uh, over the course of the next uh, probably 15 minutes, is to find in a set of uh, Enron data, we're going to use, of course, the reason the Enron data set, uh, we're going to find all of the related documents uh, that are judicial verdicts and court orders. And we're going to try to do that through uh, a simple search, an advanced search. We're going to try, and then we're going to try to do it with uh, assisted review. We're going to kind of compare the results. So if you look here in Xilab 1 at a simple search, um, this is about as simple as you get. We're using uh, a file type field and say, hey, we we're bringing back any document that has an image uh, in it. There are about 600,000 documents in this data set, just as to give you a frame of reference. And that file type image search brought back 15,274. Not, not really useful. We're not going to do any linear review of 15,000 documents looking. So let's try the next method. Um, a bit more advanced now. So rather than doing bring back all documents, we're going to go on the file name and we're going to say, hey, bring me back all documents that are either star.pdf or star.tiff, um, hoping that those would be the, uh, the court verdicts. And that does narrow our data set down to, uh, down to 4,100 documents, but still a bit too much to look through manually. Uh, so now let's try, we'll step it up a bit, and we'll use some Boolean operators. And so now we're getting into a bit more of a complex queries. So you can see I'm using uh, the word court and then Boolean separator and. Uh, then I'm using a fuzzy search court. Uh, misspelled up to one character, and I'm also putting a whole bunch of other terms in, support, a superior court, complaint, plaintiff, law, etc. cetera. Uh, and actually, you could, do, you could look, do law asterisk if you wanted. Of course, that would bring back lawyer as opposed to just law or laws. Uh, so let's, looking at that, uh, that's one approach. We can also simplify that a bit and use quorum searching, and I like to advocate for quorum search because it's one of those lesser known search techniques. 
really helpful uh, in, uh, in doing this type of search because instead of using a whole bunch of Boolean AND statements, you can have this one much cleaner uh, syntax where you say, hey, I only want documents that have at least three of the following uh, terms in them. And the terms in this case you can see are the same ones that I used in the Boolean uh, or, uh, excuse me, Boolean AND uh, statement in the previous slide. But it just, it's easier to write, it's easier to manage. And you can also make this list much, much longer with a quorum statement, whereas with AND, uh, you eventually run out of space in a query search field. So um, that's one approach. Uh, we could also try a regular expression query. And uh, so, you know, you can see civil action numbers have, have a, a format to them. So we can use regular expressions. In this case, we're going to do the word civil, uh, fuzzy search, uh, up to two characters can be misspelled. Action, same thing, up to two characters can be misspelled. Because remember, you, these are scanned in OCR documents. So there is potential that the optical character recognition is not 100% exact. It's usually very good when you're dealing with documents uh, like this, but there is the possibility that it could be a misscan. So you want to account for that with your, your fuzzy search. Um, we're going to use the operator within three, so civil or action within three words of, and then we're using a regular expression pattern. Um, A to Z represents any letter uh, with one occurrence, followed by the question mark is a single character wildcard, so that could represent the hyphen, uh, followed by any number, zero to nine, that appears twice, followed by, again, a wild card that could be the hyphen, followed by a number that, that appears four times. So that matches the pattern that we have here, that's uh, right here, which shows uh, H013624. And so this would come back as a hit for this query. And in fact, that's what happened here. But again, it's still uh, very complicated. And that's if you can form that query, if you, if you have the expertise to write that query. Uh, this is an example of uh, the Xilab uh, batch search feature. This allows you to paste a whole bunch of searches into one screen and have it run uh, all together against a data set. And so you can see here that uh, using that queer quorum search that we just came up with, um, we have increasingly values of that quorum search. Hey, here's four, ver four hits, five hits, six hits, seven hits, et cetera. Even at seven hits within our, our list, we still have 12, over 1,200 documents. Uh, that would come back as a result set. You can see how it uh, how the data set diminishes the more hits we request as part of our query. So again, uh, not the best approach to doing this with, with batch search or e any search query for that matter. So now we bring in um, Xilab's technology assisted review. So what we're effectively doing with TAR, uh, and it's TAR for short, so if you hear me say that, um, we are teaching the computer. It's a, it's a binary classifier. It has to be taught through machine learning. So we're teaching the computer what relevant and non-relevant documents look like. Um, the classifier then learns from this and is able to um, bring back better and better, more or more relevant documents each time. And this process gets repeated until we reach a threshold of precision and recall that matches uh, what we consider to be a stop condition. Um, a condition at which we have we feel that we have reached a significant level uh, to train the classifier and we can now go ahead and use the classifier to find other relevant documents. So our test today is uh, queries versus technology assist review or TAR. And we want to know ultimately our task is how many court documents are in that data set. We've, of course, uh, you know, this is stacked against traditional search. We know that TAR is going to be faster, it's going to be smarter, and more importantly, we know that it's going to, it's going to produce the results that we want. Um, so the scope of our set is all of the uh, Enron data in this matter that we, uh, uh, we've uh, processed, and as I said, it was just over half a million documents, 671,000. Uh, we used two different methods. We had a professional searcher, so this is not just anyone, this is someone who knows the query language, um, using the Xilab queries, and we had someone who's not a professional searcher, a non-skilled searcher, using uh, the technology-assisted review, just training it based on what the documents look like. And we have the time measured for both uh, people, and we we're going we're gonna to look at the differences. Um, so this is the, what they were looking for. These are the types of documents in the data set that they're looking for. Uh, so they're looking for all of these within a, a almost 700,000 document set. And uh, I'm going to show you, rather than try to show you an entire uh, assisted review a live demo, which would take a very long time and certainly not fit within the scope of our 
uh, 30 minutes together today. Uh, we have a, a short video here I'm going to narrate for you as it walks through and it goes through pretty quickly. So we're going to have it start out much like we already talked about finding the correct documents using queries. So first we're going to do a search in the name of the document for a PDF or a TIFF. And you can see over here we're starting out with 671,000 documents. And we're actually getting, even going to expand that and use the word court as part of that search. And our result set is uh, 806 documents, which is not bad, certainly a lot less than 700,000. Um, we're going to try, uh, we're going to improve that, that court number and we'll make sure we don't miss anything. So we'll put the tilde one for fuzzy search and we get about 1,100 results. Now we try superior court and we get 110 results. Uh, so we've got some of the documents there. Now we're going to try, try that quorum search we talked about and we do result if we combine the, the quorum search with the file name search, we do get a result set of 44 documents. And someone could review each of these documents in the Xilab interface and tag them manually like you can see happening right now. Um, they can review each document and apply a tag to indicate this, is, this document is what we're looking for. Um, but there are other approaches and we're gonna, we're gonna show you that. So as this uh, finishes up here, it's just gonna, there's our last one where it found the case number. Uh, so we did a hit based on that. So now we're going to try the same process using our technology assisted review. Uh, what's already happened, I'll, I'll just pause this right here so I can tell you, before we've gotten to this point, we've uh, gone and set up a new project in our assisted review module and we've set up the issue and we've described what it is we're going to be looking for. In this case, we're going to be looking for verdicts, uh, judicial verdicts in this data set. And the system has created a training batch for us. And the training batch has initially 10 documents in it. So we come back into our legal review environment and we go to the facet that is uh, for, uh, it's for, uh, for training this, this particular document set. And we can see uh, TAR to be reviewed right here. So this is our facet showing us the documents that have to be reviewed in that first training batch. So there are 10 documents. And it's going to look at each document. The person's going to look at each document in the training batch, and that's only 10. And they're going to tag it responsive or not responsive for this issue. Uh, it's a binary classifier, so it has to be one or the other for each document in the training set. And they're going to go quickly through all 10 documents. And you see that happening. And uh, we sped up the video for the, for the sake of the, the demonstration today. And then they're going to um, uh, look through each of these documents. They tag through all of them. Once they've made their decision and they've tagged each document appropriately, they're going to go back to the uh, results screen here. In a second, we'll see that. So they're looking through all the documents. They're applying their tags. And they get through all 10 documents. And they can see that. Actually, I want to pause right there for a second. So in our results screen, you can see here, um, there, there are here are the 10 documents that they tagged. You can see that these were tagged as responsive, these were tagged as not responsive. And so now once that process is complete, they're going to go back to the uh, Xilab Technology Assisted Review panel and look at the graphs that, that are uh, brought back. And here we are at the graphs. Uh, so actually you'll get a much better view of these graphs here in the next slide. So let's just advance that. There we go. So these were the graphs at the end. Um, and this was not at the end of, uh, of, to be fair, this was not at the end of one training batch. This was at the end of, of several training batches. So uh, you can see here in the first box that we completed uh, 170 documents were reviewed. Uh, we just created a new training batch of 10 at the time that the screenshot was done. 100 responsive documents were found out of the 170. And um, this is where we're currently at. This is where the classifier is currently. It's a precision at 90% and recall at 80%. And you can see the gain, uh, the gain curve, the precision curve, and the recall curve. And we'll look at those in greater detail in a second. But let's talk about th these concepts of precision and recall. Uh, a good human reviewer is going to, on average, uh, reach levels of about 80% recall across. So that's 80% of finding uh, the documents across the entire set and about 80% precision. So they're going to be right about the documents within their training, within their batch, uh, about 80% of the time. Uh, so the machine is already at 90% here without any further training. And as we look at the uh, the graphs, we can see that uh, in in a sense, this is actually showing us. This is the game curve showing us the relation of responsive documents to all documents that have, that have been reviewed. And you can see how the initial curve is 45%. That's pretty normal. So when you start with the first, each of these represents another training batch. 
Uh, so when you see that the 45% uh, uh, angle of that uh, slope between the data points shows that the classifier gets smarter each time that you do a training batch. So every time you get your first 10 documents, you train that you say that half of them or three of them are responsive and the other seven are not, the next 10 documents that come back are much better in terms of the quality. And that process keeps, keeps increasing until there's a plateau where you're not really going to train the classifier any better at that point because it's already reached the point where it's giving you uh, the best results back. Um, the same, this is the, the precision curve. So you can see that uh, the precision of the return set, and remember, precision deals with the, the current batch uh, that we're looking at, not the entire, uh, the entire data set. Uh, you actually want this to drop off to effect effectively to zero towards the end of the process, and that's what's happened here. And in fact, what we would probably do, what many attorneys would do beyond this point, is they'd probably do a couple more training rounds just to make sure that this stays at zero. Uh, meaning that there are no other, uh, no other. We're not getting any any other doc backs, uh, documents back in our training batch that are not responsive at this point. They should all be responsive, uh, and in most cases that will continue to say zero if we were extend the curve out further. Uh, finally, in the last um, sl uh, last graph here, you can see that uh, this is the recall graph. This is the precision against the entire data set. And this is going to ultimately drop off. So the more it's not necessary to do any further training because you're not going to get uh, you're going to get uh, not any better results or uh, the results the re the results you get back are not going to be any different. Um, so let's look at the comparison of uh, these queries versus tar. Right. So in, in in our example, this was a real world example. We timed it. It took a, it took a, a professional reviewer, someone who knows the query language, an hour and forty five minutes. They manually reviewed 132 documents and found 49 of them to be relevant. So that 37% of all the documents they reviewed were relevant. And so that was the ones they searched for. Now, there's no way to determine recall when you're talking about um, search queries because you don't know what you've missed, right? Um, so they, they, they feel they may have gotten all of the documents, but ultimately uh, it's probably, according to this, only 49% is what they found. Now, the TAR process took instead not an hour and 45 minutes, it took 35 minutes. They reviewed 170 documents, so they did have to look at more documents, but they didn't have to write any complex queries to get to those documents. But of those 170, they found 100 relevant documents, so they found twice as many relevant documents. That's 59%. And we know from the graph that we were at 90, over 90% 90 recall against the entire data set, so we were not, we're mi not missing much, if anything. Uh, this gives you a, a little better explanation or, or visualization of how this this process really works, right? So, in a, it, if you look at the, from uh, the recall here, you start at zero and your recall is 100 across the entire data set you're searching. A highly skilled searcher is going to use um, this in, these inverse pyramids. They're going to start with a standard search and they're going to find a little bit. If they do a meta, metadata search or an advanced search, they're going to find even more. Uh, when they start using uh, Analytics and advanced processing, they're going to find even more. But with machine learning, they're going to reach. They're going to. They're going to. Their recall is going to get much higher. It's going to approach 100%. Um, and it's much worse, if you can see, even for a less skilled searcher, someone who doesn't understand query languages or doesn't understand the data set as well. Um, they're not. They're not really going to approach re that level of recall at all before they get. So whereas machine learning can get them much quicker to that higher level of recall. Um, for specifically for investigators, we have uh, one thing I didn't show you a demonstration of is really our topic modeling function. So in addition to um, in addition to uh, assisted review, you also have this concept of of clustering documents with like topics together. We are able to assign a uh, a weight for every document, um, a, a number, numeric value, and then the topics in those documents are grouped together. So I can see at a glance through this wheel, or if I prefer a tree list, what the important topics are in this data set, the ones that appear most often. And I can drill down in the actual application, I can actually drill down into this, into any particular wedge uh, within my circles. A really good place for investigators who don't know where to begin their search to get started. Um, ultimately, I think you've seen here, um, we find that uh, a linear manual review with a lot of people is much more timely, much uh, much more time intensive, much more labor expensive. Uh, ultimately, a single reviewer with, who knows the data set with assisted review is going to be 
three anywhere from three to twenty times more uh, more efficient than a manual review process, and they're going to certainly be a lot more accurate. And it's fully defensible. Uh, it's been it's been proven in many court cases already that assist, the use of assistant review is a valid way to get to the data. Um, you know why why AI based analytics? I think it's fairly obvious. Uh, humans just have cognitive limitations when they're looking through large data sets. Um, and there's technology technology does exist now and has been vetted. It's mature that can be utilized. Uh, the Grossman Carmack article uh, talks about AI and how it was much faster uh, than uh, much less, of course, much less expensive uh, than human re manual review. Uh, and it's uh, it's not been uh, it's not been successfully refuted. So it's it's been very valid in terms of. Uh, representation. Humans simply can't successfully synthesize through large volumes of data like AI can. Uh, to quote one of my uh, one of my personal favorite movies, uh, The Matrix from 1999, uh, Agent Smith said never send a human to do a machine's job. It's very, very appropriate for this type of uh, presentation. Um, I, I touched on defensibility and that is important. Uh, you know, uh, those in legal profession, lit litigators, often uh, need to get comfortable with the technology, and especially when we're talking about AI. So I encourage you, if you're interested in more information about that, uh, you can go to zilab.com slash resources slash trust dash center, uh, read more information about our AI technology and how it is, uh, how it is designed, how it, can be, uh, how it is defensible, how it's been proven. Um, in, along with that, we encourage you to try out Xilab One. Uh, we are allowing for full uh, free trials of the software. Um, if you go uh, visit the xilabcom uh, discovery software free trial, and I think that URL will probably be sent out to all attendees as well. Uh, you'll be able to sign up for a free trial. We'll actually be able to log into our web-based environment and try out the uh, the Xilab platform as well as our, our technology assisted review. We have a number of ebooks that we've published uh, on this topic. I encourage you, uh, these are free resources that we've developed. Uh, they're available at xilab.com slash resources uh, slash ebooks. And uh, if you'd like to meet us in person, we will, our next large event will be Legal Tech in New York, uh, January 30th to February 1st. We'll be at booth 2101 on the second floor. I encourage you to come visit us. And with that, we are just reaching the end of our time today. Uh, last chance for any questions that might come up. We have about a minute left. If, if, if you'd like to send questions after the fact, um, because uh, we are just about out of time here, I would encourage you to do that. There will be a follow-up email, uh, and I will make sure that any questions that are uh, replied to get back to me, and I'll be happy to answer them. Or if you'd like a private demonstration of the Xilab uh, solution, we'd be happy to arrange that as well. With that, I want to thank you for your time today. And uh, have a, have a, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Take care.